Well, thank you very much for the, the introduction and also the welcome to participate in the summit. It's been a very enjoyable and informative session so far, so thank you for that. And so I'm going to talk today about 5G and wireless broadband evolution. The agenda for the talk is presenting our vision and then some of the use cases and breaking it down into the key areas of improvement and then some of the technical enablers which help will kind of usher in the, the, um, the vision and its execution. So in a summary, we feel that 5G is about enabling new services and new devices, connecting new industries, and empowering new user experiences. We feel it should be a unified 5G design that is scalable and adaptable across extreme variations of use cases. So one of the key ways to look at it is we want to support all 4G can do, but with improved network architecture and cost efficiency. So we want to enable new services and incorporate device-to-device -device communications, integrated access and backhaul. That's something a, a variety of others have also mentioned, the need to have the, the, the backhaul aspect and the access aspect in a more integrated way to enable low-cost densification. We feel a unified design for licensed and unlicensed spectrum is going to be important, as well as adding new bands at higher frequencies, including millimeter wave. And the advent of 5G will be concurrent with the continued evolution of 4G, such that we see a need to continue evolving the 4G path and at the same time introduce 5G both in lower bands, sub six gigahertz, as well as exploring higher frequency bands. So if we take a step back, 5G is about connecting people and things across scenarios. So we have ultra high capacity broadband, extreme densification of users. We want to be serving smart homes and buildings, wearables and new form factors. There's been a lot of discussion over the sessions about in, in IoT and IOE and the role of wearables and the role of WAN connectivity in addition to having the smartphone as a hub. We feel that that, that space is going to continue to evolve and grow over time and we want to make sure that 5G is providing a platform that can address those scenarios. Also, medical and emergency response, looking at some of these mission critical applications, looking at how we can design a network that is going to enable these future wireless applications. Remote control, sensing, and surveillance as another application where we feel having a 5G platform that people can put to use for envisaging and implementing some of these future vertical markets and even uh, future operator deployments. Smart grid and critical infrastructure, we feel is also going to be important in terms of the application of 5G. So if we take a step back then, it's gonna be the heterogeneous services that are gonna drive the 5G requirements. Empowering new user experiences. We do wanna take the user experience to the next level in terms of data rate, lowering latency, and lowering the energy consumption and the power consumption. We want to connect new industries, so improvements across security, reliability, and availability, and enable new mission-critical applications and communications and services. And we also want to improve network cost efficiency. So if we look at the cost per bit, that's going to be a fundamental metric that needs to be addressed holistically going forward. So we want the 5G network to be a compelling cost structure, something that can enable 2020 and beyond for a long period of time to have that network deliver on these use cases. So the, it's, I think, going to be very important to pull in techniques that can drive this cost efficiency across the network. So we're going to want better capacity and then better scalability. In terms of new lower cost deployment models, we want to have full self-configuration. We want to make sure the capex and the opex of the network are getting much lower. So we can show a few examples here in our, in our slide of, of the, the particular scenarios in terms of driverless cars as being mentioned, emergency response, smart lighting, security. This whole smart city application is something that can be enabled by a very powerful and low cost 5G network. So the key areas of improvement, these have been mentioned by many of the other companies as, as well, but it's important to highlight that the number of devices and the variability across devices so it's, it's not going to be a one-size-fits-all network. The network itself is going to be scalable and adaptable such that in the particular requirements of that device are being met in a scalable and the most efficient manner. 
So the variability in terms of the data rate distribution across the devices, the duty cycle of the devices, the power and energy requirements of the devices is gonna be very important. The data capacity and the density of network needs to improve. The user experience does need to take that quantum step forward in 5G. So as we continue to evolve 4G, we need to look for 5G as an opportunity to take that, that more larger step function in addition to evolving 4G. We want reliability and security and connectivity and coverage. So coverage has been mentioned quite a few times as well. It is important to have this critical redundancy to really increase the reliability in terms of what services can be offered, in terms of increasing the, uh, the, the coverage throughout the network and to be able to have these higher guarantees of throughput and latency and that you're making the connection. So in terms of what's decreasing, we can describe the network cost per bit. So this is something where leveraging virtualization, leveraging evolving technology, having a lower cost deployment model that can then drive this increased number of devices. Latency needs to get a lot lower in terms of how we design not only the, the over the air round trip time, we can decrease the TTI, but more importantly, we have to take a more holistic view of latency across the network, depending on the application and service. The protocol overhead also has to be reduced. We wanna make sure that the, depending on the particular application, the protocols are right sized for the, the service that is being provided. So we see the need for the overall network to be much more adaptable, not only as it scales up in data rate, scales up in bandwidth in, in aggregation, but also that it scales down. So fundamentally, the 5G network needs to be designed such that it allows the scalability in both dimensions. So this is where we also bring in then the power consumption and the energy consumption, such that this network going forward can deliver on these, these scenarios of increased range and then much lower power consumption. If we look at then the radio access technologies, we see a, we, a continued evolution of the current technologies plus a, a healthy exploration of when are new technologies going to be the right ones to bring to bear. So we talk of vehicle to vehicle communications, mobility on demand, where the protocols simplify when users are stationary, such that the overhead is lower, the protocol is simplified. You don't have to have mobility when you're in a more stationary or indoor or localized sense. We want to leverage coordinated spatial techniques. We want to leverage multi-hop device to device. So these are things that are going to be designed in from the onset. So the overall system is going to take into these requirements from the onset and to derive an overall better architecture that can support these varying techniques. I mentioned integrated access and backhaul and Pico cell. So the Pico cell mesh where the, the Pico cells are talking to each other over wireless. This could be a millimeter wave link. It could also be a lower frequency link, but at the same time, the Pico cells are providing access. We want to enable ultra aware network and devices. Those of us know in the device community how much the context awareness and the intelligence and the capabilities of the device have improved over the last five and 10 years. If we turn now the perspective to the network, we wanna make sure the intelligence of the network takes a similar path. So how much can the network know? How good a job can the network do of predicting and driving an ultra aware network? So we want context awareness not to be something that people associate only with their device, but I think a 5G network can holistically incorporate context awareness as well so that we have a truly cognitive network in terms of delivering improved user experience. Massive spatial processing in terms of the techniques that are being used within and across nodes is gonna enable higher spectral efficiencies and even denser network deployments with interference coordination. As has been mentioned, the true way to increase capacity is density as well as spectrum and spectral efficiency. So being able to support denser scenarios is going to be key. We want the network to be fully self-configurable. So even as self-configuring techniques are being explored and implemented now, we want to take that into the design in a much more fundamental way, such that the network is fully self-config and it allows a much lower operational cost for the 5G network. And also at multiple access for more active, connect more active connections. We want to be able to serve a huge number of devices and have techniques that most optimally design the multiple access capabilities. Low latency and high reliability. We want to holistically address those requirements in terms of being able to provide mission critical communications 
and decrease the end-to-end -end latency in terms of how we implement security, how we implement the end-to-end -end network. And as I mentioned, we want to be targeting license and unlicensed spectrum, sub six gigahertz and above six gigahertz, including millimeter wave bands. If we take a look now at the network architecture, as we've seen on the evolution from HSPA to LTE and LTE+, we evolved from a classic centralized architecture with, with uh, control plane and user plane to being having a flattened RAN architecture where the control plane and user plane were split and then implementing techniques such as SIPTO where the user traffic is offloaded to the edge. In 5G, we want to holistically, from the onset, fully leverage techniques such as NFV, network function virtualization, for lowering the, the implementation costs of the network in terms of CapEx and then OpEx. We're going to continue to explore techniques such as uh, moving the user plane to the edge to, uh, to offload that traffic, but at the same time also take a mobility on demand approach where we can dynamically move the control plane as well in terms of that the C plane and the U plane are both optimized for the particular scenario. If we take a look now at spectrum, in, in addition to looking at sub six gigahertz spectrum, we want to take a perspective licensed spectrum and then unlicensed spectrum, and in the middle, the shared licensed spectrum. So it's important that we fully leverage all possible spectrum types in the 5G design. So this will also include spectrum above six gigahertz, including millimeter wave. So by taking a overall approach to targeting spectrum, we can then have the most unified 5G design that's gonna enable this more capable network. So in terms of some of the enablers, there's been a lot of discussion of millimeter wave, and certainly it does have a lot of opportunities. Large bandwidth is obvious in terms of leveraging then higher data rates and better directivity in terms of for the same aperture based on beam forming techniques, we can obviously steer narrow beams. That allows high spatial reuse and integrated backhaul and access. So millimeter wave does pose a lot of opportunities for a wireless communication system. Now, of course, it also has some fundamental challenges that are not present in the lower frequency bands. In particular, the propagation through walls and windows is something where the penetration loss has to be taken into account in terms of what scenarios are we gonna target of outdoor to outdoor or indoor to indoor. And it's something where we have to take that into account in terms of how we deploy millimeter wave frequencies and how we involve them in the overall network design. We need beam search and tracking techniques for supporting mobility on millimeter wave in terms of the overall design of the, of the uh, air interface. And device power consumption is important in terms of the power amplifier, technology, the efficiencies of the PAs, if we're trying to close links on the order of 150 to 200 meters, we really do have to take into account carefully and holistically for particular types of devices, what is the power consumption scenario versus a very short range millimeter wave communication. So we're, we're building up our test bed. We're doing a lot of uh, measurements of, of propagation for various types of materials, looking kind of deep at uh, reflection and diffraction properties, looking at outdoor picocell coverage modeling across direct and reflected paths, and even looking at the system design in terms of what it means of interference limited versus noise limited. So millimeter wave represents a very compelling and interesting opportunity and has to be very carefully investigated to see what's the best way to integrate it into a future 5G system. We also have the term, the 5G edgeless topology, where we want to explore ad hoc mesh networks at the cell edge to provide ex redundancy and extended coverage. So this will be a more dynamic topology benefiting from a flatter peer-to-peer -peer relationships. So instead of only thinking of downlink and uplink, we want to holistically look at multi-hop, want to look at device to device. We want to look at mesh, both from a picocell to a picocell sense, and then also from a device to device sense. In that, in that perspective, it is, really, it is really a more agnostic communication between two nodes, and what is the link that is being designed for those particular nodes. So items such as multi-hop should be integrated into the design philosophy and the air interface from the onset. And this multi-hop D2D communication will also leverage proximal service discovery such that you can discover and have new communications across a variety of devices. So by taking these techniques into account from the onset, it's gonna also enable a more flexible 5G deployment. Scaling to a huge number of devices is something that requires provisioning of subscription management to be explored carefully. We wanna lower the signaling overhead, the addressing overhead, 
and enable these heterogeneous services across people and things. So then when we take a step back, we can say, well, what is 5G? It's a unified system design from the onset that is taking into account the scalability and adaptability of the network. We can look at dimensions across the data rate, capacity and latency, the so-called classical wireless dimensions, and at the same time leverage ultra-aware networks, ultra-secure techniques, driving reliability and driving scalability. So in terms of some of the techniques, having a more service adaptive bandwidth and duty cycle with mobility on demand across a huge mix of traffic and devices. On the user rate, we want to have even wider bandwidths, leveraging millimeter wave spectrum and spectrum below 6 gigahertz, and also leveraging licensed and unlicensed bands. On the capacity front, we want to uh, en enable overlapped ultra-dense cells and massive spatial techniques and design a system for low latency, for startup and data flow, improving not only the network architecture, but also the error interface. And then, as I mentioned, on the ultra-aware network, making sure that the network itself is benefiting from this huge amount of knowledge of the contextual awareness in the devices and in the network itself. And security is the, another dimension that we think is important to address, both in terms of what we can do to lower the latency and enable some of these new mission-critical applications. So in summary, this is our view of 5G and how it all fits together. So I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thanks very much.